Question here is, consider the ground state of chromium atom, wherein the atomic number Z is equals to 24. The number of electrons with azimuthal quantum numbers L equals to 1 and 2 are respectively what? So we need to tell the number of electrons with azimuthal quantum number L equals to 1. So when L equals to 1, it corresponds to P subshell. P subshell. And when L is equals to 2, it corresponds to D subshell. It corresponds to D subshell. Always remember. So, if I just write the electronic configuration for chromium with atomic number 24, I'll just write it down like this. It is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5 and 4s1. Okay. So, over here, the subshell, P subshells are 2p and 3p. So, the number of electrons with azimuthal quantum number L equals to 1 corresponding to P subshell, they have in total of 12 electrons. 6 from 2p subshell and 6 from 3p subshell. This is from, this 6 electrons is from 2p subshell and this 6 electrons are from 3p subshell. So, in total of 12 electrons. Talking about the number of electrons with azimuthal quantum number L equals to 2, that means D subshell. There is only one D subshell having 5 electrons. So, we'll just mark it 12 electrons for P subshell and 5 electrons for D subshell having azimuthal quantum number 1 and 2. Therefore, option number B is the best suited answer for this particular question. Fine. The question over here is, which of the following species is isoelectronic with carbon dioxide? What do you mean by isoelectronic or isoelectronic species? I'll say isoelectronic or isoelectronic species are those species which contains equal number of electrons. Okay. So, we need to find out that which among the following options given to us is isoelectronic with carbon dioxide is having equal number of electrons as carbon dioxide do have. So, how many electrons this, this particular carbon dioxide contain? So, in carbon dioxide, we have one carbon atoms and two oxygen atoms, okay? So, if I just talk about the count of the number of electrons. So, for carbon, it is six electron. For two oxygens, two oxygens, it means two into eight. So, it's six electron. And it is 16 electron. So, total, total of 22 electrons are present in carbon dioxide. A total of 22 electrons are present in carbon dioxide. 6 electrons, 6 electrons from carbon and 16 electrons from 2 oxygen we have got over here. So, it's 22 electrons in total for carbon dioxide. If I talk about the azide ion, wherein we are seeing... 3 nitrogen atom. So, if it is having 3 nitrogen atom and 1 nitrogen atom contains 7 electrons. 1 nitrogen atom contains 7 electrons. So, 7 into 3 plus 1. Now, this plus 1 is of the negative charge present on negative charge present on azide ion. So, 7 into 3 plus 1 which is equals to 22 electrons. Okay. That means option number A is isoelectronic species with carbon dioxide. Talking about CNO negative ion. Okay. So, it is having three different types of the atoms, carbon, nitrogen and oxygen along with the negative charge. So, the number of electrons for carbon is 6. Number of electrons for nitrogen is 7. Number of electrons for oxygen. Number of electrons for oxygen is actually 8. Fine. Plus 1. Why 1? Because of the negative charge present over here. We'll add the anion. We'll add the negative charge. So, it becomes equals to, it's 7 and 1, 8. 8 and 8, 16. 16 plus 6, 22 electrons. That means CNO negative ion is also isoelectronic with carbon dioxide. Talking about NCN2 negative ion. So, number of electrons present in nitrogen is 7. Number of electrons present in carbon is 6. Again, nitrogen, so 7. Plus 2 charge. It's minus 2 charge given to us. So, we'll add this particular negative charge. So, it becomes equals to how much? 7 and 6, 13. 13 and 7, 20. 20 plus 2, 22 electrons. That means 
all the three species given to us, N3 negative, CNO negative and NCN2 negative, they are isoelectronic with carbon dioxide. Hence, I'll mark option number D as the right answer to this particular question. Question here is, at 25 degrees Celsius, a certain elementary reaction has a forward rate constant equals to 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3 second hours. Okay. And equilibrium constant Kc equal to 4.19. What is the rate constant for the reverse reaction or you can say what is the rate constant for the backward reaction? So see, uh, this you might have actually studied that, uh, that equilibrium constant Kc equilibrium constant Kc. Okay, over here we are talking about an elementary reaction which is having a forward rate constant equals to 10 raised to power minus 3 second inverse and equilibrium constant Kc equals to 4.19. So, equilibrium constant Kc is equals to rate constant rate constant of forward reaction divided by rate constant of backward reaction or you can say the reverse reaction. So the value has been given straight away we will just substitute the value. So it's 4.19 equals to 10 raised to power minus 3 second inverse upon Kb upon Kb the rate constant of backward reaction. So the rate constant of backward reaction is equals to 10 raised to power minus 3 divided by 4.19 second inverse. Okay. So basically, I'll just mark option number B out of the race because over here it's showing the power 10 raised to power minus 5, which is not possible over here. Why? Because when we actually divide this particular term, it's 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3 divided by 4.19. So when 1 divided by 4.19, we'll get our result as 0.23. 1 divided by 4.19 is equals to 0 0.23 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 which was already there second inverse okay i have straight away written the answer because it was a simple division thing you need to do with the help of the approximation and you'll get your answer into your hands clear so the rate constant kb for backward reaction or the reverse reaction is 0 0.23 into 10 raised to power minus 3 second inverse which is option number a the right answer to this question. Question is, using molecular orbital theory, MOT, predict which of the following species has the shortest bond length? Which of the following species has the, has the shortest bond length? Now, there is an expression between bond order and bond length. Bond order, bond order, is directly, I won't say directly, I'll say inversely proportional to bond length. Bond order is inversely proportional to bond length. Remember this, which means we need to calculate out the bond order for the following species given to us. O2 positive, O2 negative, O2 2 negative and O2 2 positive. So we know that oxygen O2 is having 16 electrons in total. O2 positive means now one electron has been lost, 15 electron. Talking about the electronic configuration in terms of molecular orbital theory, okay, if I just write the electronic configuration, it will be sigma 1s2, sigma star 1s2, sigma 2s2, I'll write it again, sigma 1s2, sigma star 1s2, sigma 2s2, sigma star 2s2, okay, then sigma 2pz2 and then it will be pi 2px2 equals to pi 2py2. Let's count, it's 8 and 2, 10, 10 and 2, 12, 12 and 2, 14. So, it becomes then pi star 2px1 equals to pi star 2py0. Okay. So, it's 2 into 4 into 8 into 10. 10 
इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ ओ टू पॉजिटिव हैविंग फिफ्टीन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एन इट सो बॉन्ड ऑर्डर विल बी इक्वल्स टू नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल माइनस नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन एंटी बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल डिवाइडेड बाय टू सो नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन एंटी बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल वेट अ मिनट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वील कैलकुलेट नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल सो इट इज एक्चुअली टू एंड टू फोर फोर एंड टू सिक्स सिक्स एंड टू एट एंड टू टेन सो इट्स टेन माइनस टू एंड टू फोर फोर एंड वन फाइव टेन माइनस फाइव डिवाइडेड बाई टू विच इज इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट फाइव सो द बॉन्ड ऑर्डर फॉर ओ टू पॉजिटिव इज इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट फाइव ओके टॉकिंग अबाउट द बॉन्ड ऑर्डर फॉर ओ टू नेगेटिव नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द बॉन्ड ऑर्डर फॉर ओ टू नेगेटिव ओ टू नेगेटिव मीन्स ओ टू नेगेटिव मीन्स इन टोटल ऑफ सेवेंटीन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वन इलेक्ट्रॉन हैज बीन इंक्रीज नाउ ऑक्सीजन वॉज हैविंग O2 is having total of 16 electrons. O2 negative means one electron increased, added up. So 17 electron. So in this case we were we are we were having 15 electrons. So we'll make it as 17 electrons. So it's 14 into 16. 14 into 16, 16 and 117. Okay. So bond order for O2 negative will be equals to number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital. So it's 2 into 4, 4 into 6, 6 into 8 and to 10. So it's 10 minus number of electrons in anti bonding molecular orbital. So it's 2 into 4, 4 into 6, 6 and 17. Okay, divided by two, so it becomes three by two, which is equals to one point five. Okay, so the bond order for O two negative is one point five. It is equals to one point five. Talking about the bond order for O two two negative, O two two negative means one more electron added to O two negative. That means in total of eighteen electrons now. In total of eighteen electrons now. So over here we were having seventeen electrons. Make it two over here in total of eighteen. You can count two into four into six into eight, eight into ten into twelve into fourteen into sixteen and eighteen. So number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital ten minus number of electrons in anti bonding molecular orbital. So it will be two into four. Four and four eight ten minus eight divided by two, so it becomes equals to one only. So the bond order for O two two negative is equals to one. Talking about the bond order for O two two positive, O two two positive means from oxygen having sixteen electron, there is loss of two electrons. That means now we are going to get how many electrons O two two positive. Okay, that means over here in total we'll be having fourteen electrons. So that means the electrons are removed from this particular side. So it will be ten minus four. Ten minus four. So it will be ten minus four is equals to six. Six by two equals to three. So bond order for O two two positive is going to be three. Okay, now among all these species, the species having highest bond order is O two two positive. This species is having the highest bond order. If this is having the highest bond order, the bond length for O two two positive will be the shortest bond length because bond order is inversely proportional to bond bond length. So if bond order is increasing, bond length decreases, and if bond order is highest, the bond length. Will be the least. Okay, therefore only and only option number D is the right answer to this particular question. Question here is an aromatic compound follows four n plus two pi rule, where n cannot be, n cannot be a fraction value. Option number A is the right answer. N actually ranges between zero, one, two, three, and so on. It cannot be a fraction value. Therefore, option number A is the right answer to this question.